Joy said, just a week to go before the start of the season, you know, how are you feeling and more importantly, you know, how have the team developed over the past few months? Uh, quite honestly, I'm feeling a little bit uh, apprehensive because well, Sussex have had such a sustained period of success and you know, Chris Adams and Mike Yardy have done so well as captains and, and led the team so well. That it's, you know, there's quite a lot to live up to there from a personal point of view, but I think we have a, a, a very good chance in all three competitions. Uh, we have a very good squad of players, We're, we've got excellent support staff and you know this is a very well run club um, from, from top to bottom so I think we've, we, we're in a good place but it doesn't mean you're automatically going to win trophies but I think you know, the team is, team is shaping up pretty well, we're a very different side now, we lost Murray Goodwin um, last year, he's obviously one of the best batsmen if not the best batsman ever to play for Sussex so he'll be a big blow even though he didn't have a great season last year but we've also brought in Three new faces who, who are all exciting in their own right. Um, two lads from Surrey, Chris Jordan and Rory Hamilton Brown, and then obviously Andy Miller from Warwickshire as well. So I think they'll add a lot, a bit of youth and a bit of energy, and, and also a lot of skill to, to our side, especially in one day cricket where, where we're already strong. So the team is shaping up well. Uh, we've had a good pre season in Dubai and in the last few days here. A uh, good pre season, a little bit cold, but, um, but good. Kind of a changing of the guard, really. Interesting you mentioned Murray Goodwin there, obviously no longer with the county. In a sense, does that mean it, it feels like it's more your team, Ed? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think it probably probably does, really. Um, you know, Murray's been around for so long and he's, he's, he's been such an integral part of the side, but he was, he was probably the last, you know, Yards has played a bit, but he's probably the last player in that, in that special era of Sussex cricket from sort of 2003 to... You know, to the present day, we've won a lot of trophies and, and been very successful. So he's been hugely influential in that. But you know, it's, it's sort of a, a nice thing to be able to put my own stamp in. Not that Murray would have would have stopped that, but it's probably easier um, doing that with with a group of a group of younger players and maybe a few less experienced players. So, and we've still got a good core of senior players anyway. We've got Chris Nash there as a vice captain and. And you know, been around the block a lot, and obviously Mike as well, who has who, led the team so well. But also, you know, Rory's only 24, but he's captained a, a, an enormous club for three years, and has a lot of a lot of experience there. And in the bowling department, you've got McGoffin and Panasar and, and Jimmy Annie and Amjad Khan, who've played a lot of cricket as well. So we've got a really good, really good balance of, of youth and experience. Anyway, even without Murray, but um, um, as I said, it's it's just trying to get into that first game and get a few wins under our belt. Coming into the job halfway through the season, that, that, that's probably quite difficult. And I, I guess it must be quite nice to sort of think, well, I've got a full season now and it's, it's your job and, and you're the man. Uh, it's not really in my character to say I'm the man. That's the thing that's why it's quite nice that I've had a half a season to do the job and, you know, where I wasn't sort of the, the skipper. So it's, I've actually quite enjoyed, the, you know, the fact that I've not come in just cold doing the job. So the people, the lads know how I'm going to work. Um, not a huge talker, but you know, try and lead by example and play well myself, and and try and lead lead by doing that. If things need to be said, obviously I'll say them, but and um, that would be more my my way of doing things. So it's nice to have have done a bit last year and had a bit of success. You know, we played pretty well, and and it's nice to be able to go into this full season having done that. You speak about Chris Nash. He's your vice captain. He's your opening partner as well, and that was very much a strength of Sussex last season. <coughs> the opening partnership that you two had, and also scoring runs very quickly as well. Scoring runs quickly is definitely more Chris than myself, but um, fun, funny you mention that because I'm not actually going to be opening for the cricket this year. We've changed the order around a bit just because we've lost Murray and the makeup of our side and bringing Rory and we, we felt we'd change around. So I'm actually batting four and Luke Wells is going to open and, and Mike's going to bat three, yeah, which is where he, he very much wanted to bat and he was quite vocal about that. And It's actually worked out quite well. I think I've, I had a lot of my success at Middlesex batting at four and five, so I was very comfortable going back into that position. and. You know, and, and I think the team will benefit having Rory and when Luke's around as well, two attacking players at five, five and six. So to complement myself at four is probably more of a batting time type kind of guy. And you know, even myself, Yards and Luke will do that. And the three more attacking players sort of around us. So we we're going to do that. But you, you're right, the opening partnership is going to be crucial this year. And, and Chris is one of our, is one of our, if not our most important batsmen, because he, he opens the batting in all three forms of the game and, and he's done it really well. And, as he mentioned, he scores very quickly, so he's, he's a big player for us. He's also the vice captain, and I know I'm going to be missing games playing for Ireland. And uh, one of the big things about me taking on the role was how I was going to deal with missing games and what the contingency plan was for that. And and you know, Chris is more than happy to do that role. And I think you know he's obviously got one eye on the future and hoping to do the role probably full time. But I think this will be a good way of him growing and 
and, and he knows he's definitely going to do three championship games this year and it's a possibility in 2020 which I haven't played in the last few years whether I play or not and if I don't do that then he'll obviously take on that role so you know it's, it's a good learning experience and good growth for him and it's something, it's something that probably he needs to, to, to do at this stage because he's now become such an integral part of the side in terms of his performance and I think it'll help him grow. You were saying that Mike Yardy wanted to bat number three. Did Luke Wells want to open the batting, or was it the fact he's a left-handed? Did that sort of almost make him an automatic choice? Well, he's been batting three anyway, um, and you know he's, uh, everyone knows who bats three. That he might as well be opening as well. It's, it's, they're very similar roles. Uh, I spoke to Luke about it. We had a chat about it, and Luke said he's always opened the batting, so he was more than happy and more than happy to open. In fact, he said he was he was probably happier opening, which is it's actually worked out quite nicely. Whether it, it uh, translates into performances and we do well, that's, that's another thing, but everyone seems quite happy with their new roles. Talking about the skippering, and you, you mentioned there Rory Hamilton Brown coming, we'll speak about Chris Jordan in a moment, but I, but I asked Rory earlier on how, you know, if things aren't perhaps going well in the field, would he sort of want to wander up and have a chat to you? And he said, well, you know, he, sort of when you've got 10 players talking in your ear all the time, it's difficult. What, what sort of is it, what, what, how much would you be leaning on him or asking him for advice? It's a good question. Uh, I think you always have great sort of ideas before the season of having ten, 11 captains out there and taking everyone's advice and stuff like that. It never really works out that way. Um, you, what you, I think ideally what you want as a captain is for everyone to be thinking as a captain and if you go from advice that they've got something for you, I think that's ideally what you want. You don't want necessarily people coming up and constantly being in your ear about things because that can then confuse you. Um, as I said, you want you want to be able to you want eleven players engaged out in the pitch, and I think we've got that. We've got a really good group of lads. Not just Rory. Obviously, Mike's got huge captaincy experience. Chris Nash knows he's vice captain now, and he's going to be lent on a bit more. And you've got people like Ben Brown and Luke Wells, who who as young players, you know, you wouldn't expect that from them, but actually they've been really good. And, and Brownie's been particularly good. We're trying to get him to you know the wicketkeeper to play such a crucial role as Matt does for England. Um, we've been trying to get him to sort of grow into to being more of a leader out in the pitch, taking control of field placings and, and, and you know, being a bit of a controller of the ball, whether it's swinging or not, and whether we need to sort of yeah, manage the ball a bit better. So, he, that, yeah, we've got a good group of leaders out there. Interesting, I saw uh, last week that Graham Swan was saying he hopes to be fit, you know, for April to bowl, and I wonder in a funny sort of way whether that could benefit Sussex, because it might mean that Monty Panasar doesn't play so much test cricket this summer. Definitely benefit us if we get Monty. You know, um, he's been himself and Steve McGoffin have been our two standout four-day bowlers by a, by a country mile. Uh, they've got the most wickets and they and they control the game as well. Which is, you know, Jimmy Anya's got a hundred wickets in the last two years, which is a phenomenal effort. But I think you know he he'd be the first to say he's probably leaked a few too many runs. And what we're what we'd be looking for this year from the bowling unit for uh, would be to to have a bit more control. Um, just as a, you know, Monty's crucial to that. Uh, if, if we lose him, we're really going to have to come up with some other plan to, to try and get that control. Um, he's, he's a quality, quality performer, a quality bowler, and we've seen maybe not, this has been as, probably as poor as winter with England and New Zealand, where it's tough to be a spin bowler, but um, he's a massive player for us, and we probably need him to be, to be challenging for the, for the championship, I think. In terms of the balance of the side, uh, Luke right away <coughs> in, in India playing 2020 cricket, is there a chance for another new son in Chris Jordan maybe to come in and fill those boots? Well, the way he's performed pre-season, I think if, if the two of them were here, he'd probably play anyway, if I'm being completely honest, because he's, he's probably been the standout player. Um, it's hard to know what to expect from, from Chris, because we, we'd seen, I've seen quite a lot of him play against him, and he's always done well without being you know, as, as good as he may be looks, if that, if that makes any sense, but he's got enormous potential, he bowls 85-90 mile an hour and potentially swings the ball, um, he can bowl long spells, he's a very fit guy, he can bat and he can feel the first slip and he can feel it anywhere really, so you know, he's, he's a dream player as long as he's performing, so he's done brilliantly pre-season, you know, the way he's done, he's, he's, he's almost a certain starter for us in, in all forms really, so I'm um, speaking obviously you have to check that with Robert first, but um, but yeah, he's done very well, so there's a massive chance for him there. L losing Luke isn't ideal, but that's just the way cricket are. You know, I'll be missing games for Ireland, he's away with that, and you know, we lose Matt and Monty at different stages as well, so that's just the nature of, nature of cricket in the, uh, in the world at the moment. So, you know, he does balance our side, and we'll have to come up with some way around that, but uh, when he comes back, we'll, we'll certainly welcome him back. I just wonder with Chris Jordan as well whether there was kind of unfinished business at Surrey that he, you say, he didn't perhaps quite fulfil his potential, but you know here at Sussex he, he could fulfil that potential. 
Yeah, I think he, one thing he's mentioned and we've always said is that he seems to one day be batting, opening the batting and batting at eight and then he's opening the bowling and he's, then he's the first change and second change. What we hope to do here is give him a really specific role that he, you know, he might open, say he's the first change bowler and he bats at seven or eight, you know, but wherever he, whatever he does, we'd hope to sort of make sure that he's doing that consistently so that he knows exactly what's expected of him. And the same in one day cricket, he might be someone who opens the bowling and bowls to the death and bats at seven or what, you know, whatever that may be, he'll... We'd like to give him something where he, he knows exactly how he's how he's gonna you know when he turns up he knows exactly what he's gonna do so I think that'll help, hopefully help him be more consistent and feel a bit more you know loved and, and we've got a good record of sort of uh, people who maybe haven't fulfilled potential coming down to Sussex and doing well so um, he seems like a very level-headed guy and he's been really good to speak to about cricket which is which has been brilliant so um, yeah we've, we've made some good signings I think. Someone we haven't spoken about is Steve McGoffin, and I just wonder, as a skipper, how nice it is maybe if things aren't going too well that you can sort of look down to third leg or fine man and toss the ball to McGoffin and know you're going to get ten overs, sort of one for fifteen out of it. He's a dream bowler. He's a dream bowler for a captain because you know exactly what you're going to get. That's the, the perfect bowlers, especially in four-day cricket. Is you, you, you don't get any surprises. So him and Monty are very similar in that you, you know exactly what you're going to get. Um, it doesn't mean they're going to get. That's why we'd like the other guys to step up and be. But if they're a bit more consistent, you might get more wickets from those two because people can't just sit in them. If if the bowling is consistently good, you can't just sit in those two, which is what a lot of teams tend to do. They know that if they can get through McGoffin and Pan and so they might get some bad balls from the other guys. So um, potentially, if we're more consistent as a bowling unit, those two guys will really come into their own. Especially Steve, who, who bowled so many overs for us last year and did brilliantly. Um, you know, we'd look to probably keep him just for championship cricket because that's the type of bowler he is. But as he as he said, he's a dream for me. And in terms of the club as a whole, we interviewed Callum and Harry today, two young cricketers who've been given contracts here. They're absolutely delighted. You know, they're the future of Sussex cricket. How do you see the club developing in terms of nurturing that and <coughs> young talent coming through and bringing you know the players of tomorrow into the first team? Yeah, your, your succession plan is very important. Uh, as I said, I think we've got a really good mix now that, you know, we've got Rory and Chris there, sort of mid-twenties, and you've got um, Ben Brown and Luke Wells, who are early twenties, and then you've got uh, Harry and Callum, who, who are sort of under-nineteens and, and did really well with the England under-nineteens in South Africa this winter. And, um, you know, the, you need those guys coming through. Um, you'd be looking to sort of introduce them into the side in the next few years when people like, you know, old, you know, punters like myself sort of start coming to the end and um, you need those guys to have played a bit of cricket. That's why maybe you stick with Luke's played two, Luke Wells has played two years of cricket, uh, first class cricket now and you'd hope he'd play four or five by the time he becomes a senior player and then by that stage hopefully Harry and Callum have both played a year of it and they're sort of going into their mid-twenties doing that in the situation that Luke and Ben are in now. So you've got to be thinking about that kind of stuff for sure and I think that's why they've They've got the sort of junior contracts they're on, and, and you know why they're in the dressing room with us. And again, they're hugely talented. Everyone speaks so highly about them, and, and they've been really good around the dressing room. They seem to they seem to have good heads in their shoulders, which is half the battle. Final question: You walk out at Headingley next Wednesday, a week today. It's probably freezing cold and snowing in Leeds. I expect. I just I just wonder this stage of the season when you walk out, you you, know, you flip the coin, you win the toss. What, what do you do? Is it, is it sort of a, almost luck as to what the tracks are going to do, particularly with all this cold weather around? Yeah, I think it is, to be honest. I'm, I'm not a, if you look at a wicket, it's very, very seldom you look at a wicket and know exactly what it's going to do. I mean, in April, you're pretty certain there's going to be a bit of movement, especially with the new ball. So. And interestingly, I think we've played some of our best cricket fielding first in the last few years, which you know, isn't the traditional way of usually win the toss and, and, and bat, regardless of the situation. So I think, you know, it'll... I'm not a huge believer in the toss and I think if you play the best cricket over four days, it's a bit of a cliche, you're going to win the game. Um, and if you think too much about the toss, you confuse yourself that, that it's the be on end or it shouldn't be. Um, but I think, you know, looking at the stats, I think you know, we might be looking to field a bit more this year, especially with the relayed wickets here. Uh, I know we don't play here till May, but the relayed wickets here seem to, seem to favour the team bowling first. So, you know, we'll, we'll just look at the wicket and have a guess. But if it's cold down here, I know it's going to be pretty cold up in Leeds. So, um, the next three days against Loughborough, I'm glad we've got these this three day game coming up because going if we'd gone straight into a championship game, I'd, you would have felt maybe a bit undercooked having been away in Dubai and suddenly coming into this cold weather. So, we'll get used to it, I'm sure, in the next few days. And sorry, one final question, and I guess I have to ask at the beginning of the season is it a case of Sussex attacking all competitions on the same front? You feel there's an opportunity you know, in the championship 2020 and the YB40 as well? 
Definitely a chance of winning all three competitions. I think history would say in the last few years we've probably been a slightly stronger one day side and 2020 side. So I would expect us to be com very competitive in all forms. Um, I think, as Robo said in the press conference, I think you, you, we're able to, with the group of players we, we have, I think we're able to attack all three competitions um, and then see where you are sort of th two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way through the, through the season. and. Maybe reassess and maybe maybe you know maybe you push for one or, or the other. But in in our case last year we were in for all three, so you just have to you know battle on and try and win all three. That's just the way it is. Um, but it's much better being involved in all three sort of competitions than not. So I think we've got a very good squad. As I said I think you know we've got a lot of bases covered. I think we'll be competitive in all forms, but that doesn't guarantee success. Wonderful. Thanks for joining me. Good luck. No worries.